All right, everyone, we're changing it up a little bit today. Remember a guy called Mikey Johnston, not Alistair Johnson. Uh, Mikey is his name. Uh, he was Celtics number 19 before we signed O, and he's no longer Celtics number 19. But we've not forgotten about him. He's currently out on loan in Portugal on a season-long loan at Vitoria de Guimarães. And that gives us a perfect excuse to catch up with an old friend of the show, Portuguese football journalist Aaron Barton, who we last spoke to uh, way back in the summer of 2021, Aaron, when uh, Jota first signed. And what a journey we've all been on <laughs> since then. And I include you in that. Because I know you've been to at least one Celtic game. I know that because I bumped into you on the train uh, probably at the end of, of last season. So you're cl- clearly enjoying Jota and Celtic as much as the rest of us. Yeah, and he scored in that match. It was the uh, the game against Rangers towards the end of the season, just before the title was wrapped up. So I got to see a, a Jota goal live in the flesh. Yeah, what a journey. I think I remember distinctly remember saying on the podcast you'd be... You'd be very, very impressed with the uh, with that Portuguese winger, and um, yeah, it came through. <laughs> He's just been a, an utter revelation. Um, we love him, but we're we're here not to chat about him, but to chat about another winger who has gone in the opposite direction. Um, first of all, just to explain a little bit about Vitoria uh, and where they sit in the Portuguese game. So they. <clears throat> They're a club up in uh, northern Portugal. They see themselves as competing as one of those teams just outside the big three. So obviously you've got Benfica, Porto and Sporting at the top. And then their rivals, local rivals with Braga, um, you know, they've they've never won a Premier League title. They've never won a national title, Vitoria. They have won a cup. They won a cup, I think, back in like, 2013 or something like that. And um, but other than that, they've 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 had a couple of European campaigns to uh, to be proud of. But yeah, just outside that sort of top three, top four, and trying to push on. They they've had quite a few good players at the club, but they don't usually uh, stay long. Wingers, particularly Marcus Edwards, who's now doing doing very well at, at Sporting. He was um, signed uh, by Vitoria, and he spent spent a bit of time there. They had Ricardo Caresma recently as well. Uh, towards the end of his career, and now they've uh, now they've got Mikey. <laughs> yeah, um, h- how has he got on then? Because it was an interesting loan move. I think Celtic fans were quite excited about it. Um, bit of a mixed bag so far. Is that fair? I think yeah. I think that's that's probably fair. He started off quite well in that when he was playing, and even when he was coming off the bench, he was showing a real willingness to to beat a man to get down the line. I think in terms of his like statistics, despite the fact he's only played like six hundred something minutes in the Premier League, he still ranks quite high for like the attacker numbers. I think he's like third at the club for chances created in the Premier League. He's like I think he might be fourth for most completed dribbles. So all the sort of the statistics for a for a wide player that you'd want. Other than the goals and assists, basically, um, and I think that's where 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 his issue has been. Um, he's been in and out of the side, especially after the World Cup break. Since then, he he's been in the side a lot less. Um, he started against Porto, wasn't great, but then to be honest, Vittoria weren't either. And then since then, he, he was on the bench the other day, and then I think. Um, in the game, I think it was against either Shavs or Estoril. He came on for for a few minutes, but it's been it's been limited, uh, really limited numbers. But as I say, when he first arrived, he was playing a bit more and scored a great goal in the Tasta Portugal against Canelas, and um, scored two in that game. And it, you can really see what's there. It's just there's this sort of frustration about getting it out of him because. He will take on a player, or he'll take on two players, and he'll, you know, sort of really accelerate through through the midfield or out wide. And then it, sometimes it's just he doesn't do it enough. Mm. I mean, the the big thing I think about him leaving Celtic was I certainly felt that he when he was playing for Celtic, he was playing with a world 
the weight of the world on his shoulders effectively. He was trying too hard. The smallest thing that he did kind of wrong, a misplaced pass a minute into the game would be greeted with a chorus of, you know, groans throughout the stadium. And I think in many ways because he's a homegrown talent and we just want him to do so well that there's that expectancy at Celtic. And I don't know if he necessarily was dealing with it brilliantly. So I was hoping that, that go, going to Portugal, you know, far away, not even another loan in Scotland, not even in England, away out to Portugal, he would, uh, you know, have a bit of that pressure released. Has he looked any freer at all? Yeah, I can't, obviously, I can't really compare it with his time at Celtic, but if, by all accounts, he's enjoying himself. It sounds like, especially those connected to the club, I've heard a couple of things about like what he's like around the place and, Apparently he's a real like he's a really nice person. He's a joy to have around the club. I think with the vice the vice presidents, I think spoke about him and said that when he comes off the pitch, when he's when he's subbed off, he the first thing he does is apologize for his performance, which again strikes me as as someone who's very aware of his own performance, someone who can really hone in on what he's done well and what he hasn't done well. And I think what you talk about when you speak about pressure. A lot of players who try too hard, they're usually thinking, oh, you know, that went well or that didn't go well. Whereas some players are maybe a bit more, a, a bit freer and they, they don't sort of blame themselves or praise themselves. It's sort of just water off a duck's back. Uh, a lot of players, when they're coming off, you know, will be frustrated or, you know, it sounds like the first thing he wants to do is apologise to the coaching staff and, and really get it across that. He feels like in certain situations he, sh- he should have done better, which... Again, speaks volumes about the type of person that he is. Um, and, you know, the, the managers came out um, before, or it might have been the presidents, and said, you know, they it's financially it's out of their realms of possibility, but they love having him there and stuff. So I think it's just about him, yeah, embracing that sort of freedom and playing away from Scotland and away from Celtic and being able to just get, get a bit of consistency. But... At Vittoria, there's quite a few players who all operate within the same position. There's players who play on the right but can also play on the left. Sometimes Jota Silva, who can play through the middle, will play on the left where obviously Mikey plays. So there's competition for places, but he's still, I think he's, what, 23? Um, This will be a big experience for him. Hopefully he plays a bit more, but in terms of making him should make him a a more well-rounded person, a more more well-rounded player when he goes back to Celtic. I think he he's always been quite like that. He's had real injury troubles at Celtic, and he always, obviously, a player's going to look gutted when they're injured. But he always he he went off the pitch a couple of times when I thought he was in tears almost. That mm-hmm. he really wants to make this. I don't think you can fault his attitude, his application. Yeah, uh, I think he's quite a switched on guy with regards to football as well, and it maybe just isn't quite happening. J- just on injuries, is has he? Been all right with regards to injuries in Portugal. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, he's made because even when he hasn't played or if he's been out of the, the starting eleven for whatever reason, he's been on the bench. Um, you know, there's been games where he hasn't came off the bench, but yeah, I think in terms of being in the match day squad, not not that I can remember, he's usually in on around the first team picture. So uh, I suppose that's that's a positive is that there hasn't been any sort of major major injury concerns. But I think, like like you said, if he's the type of player who has dealt with that in the past, that's probably playing on his mind. Sometimes as a player, especially a winger, it, who, you know, you, your game is based on, you know, getting past men and, and, and beating a player and accelerating. And if you think too much about it, it's, you know, you could do a hamstring, you could, you know, muscle injury. And it's, it's a very... You know, how many times have we saw players sort of try and go through the gears and no, they're pulled up, that's it. And they're yeah. out for a couple of weeks. So uh, obviously I don't know the extent of his previous injuries really, but yeah, it's it, it does seem like he's got he's got the right attitude and when he is playing, he more you know, more than often he, he does well. I wouldn't say it's it's been a failure by any stretch of the imagination. Um but I just think probably needs to needs to get more minutes and need to air more minutes because they won't just be given as i said to do with the uh, with the depth and i think when he comes off the bench as well maybe use use those moments better because i think when he starts the game he he definitely definitely starts a lot fresher and a lot quicker and you'd think 
coming off the bench in that in that position, you may be able to to have a go. But when he is coming off, he's coming off the bench and playing. He's maybe not making the impact that he should be. But I suppose that's um, by by the sounds of of him himself, he'll know exactly what he needs to do to to get into that starting eleven. And um, you got to remember as well, it's such a big culture change for him uh, in terms of just picking up and moving to uh, to Portugal at 23. You know, you talk about it going the other way. Someone like Jota, who's of a similar age, but you think when he arrived in Scotland, he can speak fluent English. I don't know Mikey Johnston, but I'm presuming that he's had to learn Portuguese pretty quickly. <laughs> I am presuming it's not something that he picked up in school. Uh, so, you know, there's, there's that that you've got to factor into it. And yeah, being away from home and being away from, from Celtic. But... um. Yeah, I hope I I hope he does well. To be honest, and every time he comes on, I'm looking for him to 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 impress. It's worth saying that there's no option to buy in the loan deal, which may be you know a Vittoria factor. The fact he can't afford them may also suggest that Celtic do see see some sort of long term future for him. What what can he still achieve between now and the end of the season in Portugal, both both as a an individual and as part of a team? I think it's primarily his aim needs to be to to nail down a starting position. So not so much just coming in and, and trying to make a difference when he can, but rather whether it be through the work that he's putting in through the week, just taking advantage of the opportunity because at the minute in the league, they're sixth, but they're, they're level on points with Casapiro above them um, on goal difference, I think, in fifth. They're like eight points off Sporting in fourth. So that's usually when I said before they're usually outside the top three, four. This is where you'd presume that they'd be. They usually be sort of fighting it out with Braga, only that Braga are, are really outperforming and themselves really this season. So you know there's still an opportunity, there's still a chance for them to make European football, even if he's not going to be there next season to to take advantage of it. Mm. I, I think if he if he could get himself into that side, then he could really force the manager into having a bigger headache than he's got at the minute. Because that's one thing I think you can say about Vittoria is that they give the opportunities to the players. We've There's so many different players have played in that front three. So they've primarily played a 4-3-3, at least recently. They've had like central strikers playing out left. They've had to say before, they've had players who play on the right, playing on the left. They've had you know players playing a sort of like a false nine. They've used lots of different players in lots of different positions to try for them as well to try and hope that their performances improve because they've had some games where they've they've just not they've just not been at it to be honest so i think that also affects a player as well if they go to a club where the club aren't really performing at the level that they should be um but there's still there's still a long way to go they've only played 19 games this season out of um out of what 34 so yeah, hopefully he can he can break kind of properly into the team. I mean, he, I was looking at his kind of recent matches, and he is featuring in, in basically every match, just yeah. you know as a sub for for a lot of it. So he's he's not far away, and and you know these things might might just take time. Anything else? You heard anything about him personally? How he's finding it, or have you spoken to anyone who's spoken to him or anything like that? No, it's it's literally just been this. this I, I've saw a couple of things that fans have said, sort of online, um, that have been attentive to but it's just the usual stuff it's it's that yeah he, he can be exciting at times but they're sort of waiting for him to it's almost yeah. like there's the waiting for the, the safety to come off for him to just explode because there's there's been so many different incidents and so many different moments where you can literally see he's got something there's something definitely there it's not like he's coming off the the bench and it's like this player is useless that's it's not like that at all it's just how do we concentrate this, these moments into a 90 minute or 70 minutes or 80 minutes and not just little flashes here and there and then can sort of drift in and out of the game and, and you, you just can't do that at, at the top level. Um, it, it needs to be a lot more consistent. But yeah, I haven't, I haven't heard anything else other than the stuff that's came out from the club, which is apparently they all love them. Um, they, you know, they've spoken about... They they like to keep hold of him, but they know that it's not financially feasible. And you know, again, does that play into the club? They're looking at other options who are going to be there next season. Um, you don't know, but yeah, 
fingers crossed it it continues to to you know he continues to 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 get into the team and take his uh, take his chance it might just be that one big moment he needs that big goal big yeah. breakthrough performance in a game and that could see him being a uh, portuguese player of the year by the end of the season uh, well, how, how does that sound they've got braga coming up soon at home the uh, the 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 Mino derby so that's a it's a big game i think it's the the end of feb 26 27th of feb so if he can start and if he can uh, get himself into that team and come up with a big moments against the local rivals not only for what it do for vittoria but in in that it, it could go uh, some way to derailing braga's brilliancy they're only two points off second so they're going for champions league football so this is your time. This is your moment, Mikey. <laughs> Aaron, thank you so much for your insight. And if anything major happens between now and the end of the season, we will catch up with you at the end of the campaign. Brilliant stuff. Spot on. Look forward to speaking to you again.